Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in church this morning? Are you sure that you're excited to be in church this morning? Amen. We thank God for how far God has helped us and what God is doing in and through us. We believe God for greater things that he is set to do. And I'm very convinced in my heart that God who has started a good work and also perfect it in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear you say loud amen, church. Amen. At the supernatural night, I started the discourse, but I realized that, okay, it was possible some of us where um you know after the the ministration and impartation of the spirit during the word session i i wanted to communicate something to us but i communicated it halfway um so that we could pray and do other things so whilst i was praying god just laid in my heart to communicate that thought to us so by next week we're starting a new teaching series 10 times better um, the flyers will out already. The flyers will be out by um, by the banners will be out everywhere by hopefully by Wednesday Thursday it should be around the areas you start seeing it. But for this morning, God has a word for someone. I believe that there's a word that God wants someone to get. I believe that God is set to help someone find direction, help someone find insight, help someone gain balance. I also will not forget to appreciate the teachers of the children's church for all that they did. Last week was a wonderful time. Yes, uh, was a wonderful time, wonderful time, and I'm sure that it's just the beginning of great things ahead of us in Jesus' name, Amen. Genesis chapter forty from verse one. It's we're going to do two long readings today. I'll take the first one, the second reading. They're a little bit long readings, but they will help balance all the things that we want to communicate this morning. I, I want to just bring to our mind continuation from where we picked up there about um, divine remembrance and forgetfulness. Uh, what happens when a person is forgotten and what happens when a person is remembered what are the what are the things that instigate divine remembrance what are the things that cause the heavens to look down and say no this person now is your time are we here together church so i'm going to share some very deep things with us by way of digression also through the course of the <clears throat> message and i want everyone to pay attention because i believe that god has something great for us we're going to read it together we want to see the account of the man a man that God supernaturally remembered who had been through a lot in his life and you know he started young but from his tender age he started going through a lot of humiliation and he faced a lot of challenges and hostility but somehow God came through for him God came strong for him are we here together church yes God came through for him God came strong for him the man uh, Joseph so Genesis chapter 40, let's pick it from verse 1. Genesis chapter 40, we're going to read it together in concert as our custom is. And I want you to do it passionately from the bottom of your heart. One to go. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrought against the two of his officers, against the chief of the butler and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in words in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in word. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the word of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed the dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it bordered, 
and her bosom shot forth and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes i want us to read it will help you so that you can get through um and sink into the reality of what was sharing and pharaoh's cup was in my hand and i took the graves and pressed them into pharaoh's cup and i gave the cup unto pharaoh's hand and joseph said unto him this is the interpretation of it the three branches are three days yet within three days shall pharaoh lift up thy head and restore thee unto thy place and thou shalt deliver pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler but think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness i pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto pharaoh and bring me out of this house for i indeed i was stolen away out of the hand of the hebrews and here also have i done nothing that they should put me in this dungeon joseph took two verses to explain his dilemma he took a, a verse to announce that he would need remembrance he took a verse to explain to the guy that see your your solution has been found now but please when you leave this place as soon as you leave as soon as you leave here please remember me do not forget that i am the person that god used to give an interpretation i am sure that this interpretation it will come to pass i am sure that what i am saying to you it will come to pass but as soon as that has started happening please remember me do not forget the person that god used for you i'm just imagining how joseph would have said it because it shows it's, it's, it's rather evidence that joseph was not comfortable in the prison joseph knew that he wasn't happy staying here he needed he knew in his heart that there was a better place that god had for him but now he was telling the guy i have interpreted your dream i am sure you'll be restored i am sure that pharaoh will call you in i'm sure that you will go back and be the chief butler can you please remember me when you're out of this place and you would imagine that the young man would have said to joseph don't worry yourself joseph it's a simple thing as soon as i leave here i will tell my wife the story about how god used you i will also ensure that as soon as i give the pharaoh drink and he's smiling i will remind him that there's a man in the prison that interpreted my dream and probably there'll be something you could do for us you will be out joseph in fact joseph you wouldn't stay here more than two weeks two weeks is even so much don't worry joseph that's how many people have made promises to you that's how sometimes people ensure they say a lot of things and you get excited and your hopes are high and your beauty your 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 castle upon their wishes upon their promises upon the things that they have said concerning you joseph said it remember me somebody say remember me can i hear you say it loudly remember me sincerely to this message i just picked it up while i was just meditating and brooding i picked it up and um i don't know if i have intention to preach hard or preach soft i don't know but i just know that i have a communication for someone today i just know that there's somebody who came to this service today and god wants to speak something to you and he's just asked me to deliver it to us are we here together so in communicating my message today i i, I may not even my uh, my homiletical um, progressions might not be as usual but i don't know but i just think i want to speak to someone that i believe that god wants to set up for a divine remembrance are we here together when the chief baker can we do it together want to go now when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good he said unto joseph i also was in my dream and behold i had three uh -huh, on my head and in the utmost basket there was of all manner of baked meats, big meats for pharaoh and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head and joseph answered and said this is the interpretation thereof the three baskets are three days mm. go ahead and read And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker amongst his servants and he restored the chief butler to his butlership again and he gave the cup unto pharaoh's hand 
and he hung the chief baker as joseph had interpreted to them yet did not the chief butler remember joseph but forgot him despite the good that joseph did despite the fact that it was 100 percent accurate prophecy despite the fact that what joseph said it happened exactly the same way exactly the number of days exactly the same situation in fact you would have expected that it would be very easy for the guy to remember but certain times people forget the good you do to them some other people will even prepare your good with evil that has been the order of man and some other people out of excitement of the beauty of what has happened in their own life they forget the people who made it happen to them I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say now. He's excited about the fact that he has been restored to his butlership. He's excited about the fact that Pharaoh had called him back. The Bible says in the midst of his excitement and joy, something should have happened. He should have either gone back to the prison and visited Joseph and said, Joseph, you see, um, even if I cannot bring you out now, hopefully in the next one month, I'm working out something for you. Joseph, don't worry. I'm going to see how I will help you. But the Bible says after everything happened, the butler forgot Joseph. so many times good deeds can be done so many times you can go out of your way to help people so many times uh, there are people that are supposed to be on assignment to help you but for one reason or the other whether it's just that they cannot remember or situations and circumstances and i can tell you certain times some devils will not let them remember you but today god said to tell someone that the book of remembrance is opening over your life it's opening over your career it's opening over that cd that has been abandoned that project and vision that has been written in that book and nothing has happened what you submitted years back those you spoke back months talk spoke to months back those you pitched your idea to that have not said anything about it i declare in this season of the oil of favor and supernatural encounters with destiny opportunities attached to it i declare in this order your family is remembered for good you are remembered for good in the name of jesus yet he did not remember joseph move to 41 let's read verse 1 then we we'll move to verse 9 let me show you a few things can we read it together once to go church and it came to pass at the end of two full anakusia i like the bible two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river in other words he forgot joseph for how many years i can imagine joseph singing all the songs say god remember me I can imagine Joseph staying in prison and while serving Joseph would have said God what have I done wrong is this guy still alive the man who is supposed to announce me is he still alive the man who is supposed to talk of my good deeds is he still alive oh God is it that the guy has died raise for me another helper all manner of prayer points will be flying everywhere around the mind of Joseph and yet Joseph stayed in his place of service Joseph had the keys to come out of the prison why because the bible says that the keeper the jailer handed the keys to joseph and said let's share my position the favor was so much but joseph would not want to jump queue joseph would not want to break rules so he stayed in the prison he had the keys after he has served everybody in the prison he will enter his own world put his hand out and lock himself inside and stay there the other guys would have said you are a very foolish boy he said oh, i understand but I don't just want to misbehave before my time. You are very senseless. You lack sense. How can you be doing this kind of thing? What kind of God are you serving? If your God is even wise, he would have helped you. He would have told you that you should use common sense to get out of this place. Times in your life where people who do not have advice, who have not advised themselves are advising you. And Joseph will wake up in the morning, lift up his hands unto the Lord and say, God, remember me. 
that I will not be forgotten in this place of affliction I have been brought here I did not do anything wrong but I am here God remember me God how did I find myself in this situation I was high before at least serving in the house of Potiphar was something better for me how did I come to this prison God remember me I have helped people in this prison I believe that man was not the only person Joseph helped maybe this is a striking one that the Bible recorded specially I believe that there are many other people who would have come into that prison that Joseph in one way or the other would have helped but nobody remembered to help Joseph I'm going somewhere I'm going to show you something there are some of you hanging over your destiny and your head is the good deeds that the people who have gone ahead of you your father your mother your brothers and sisters people who have gone ahead of you have done good deeds heaven has approved that something should happen but for whatever reason the remembrance is hanging and those who ought to remember you are busy they are busy doing their own things for two full years joseph was not remembered two full years listen to me somebody in this season this month of may june god is going to remember you in such a dramatic way god is going to remember you in such a way that you'll be amazed at what god is doing in your life one of the signs and the following signs of the oil of favor is divine remembrance it's the following sign of the oil of favor and it came to pass go back to one let me read one and i'll pick here one one 41 verse one let's do it very fast i have another reading and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river now many things happened pharaoh had a dream you know seven um, um cows lean cows ate up seven fat cows which is abnormal then seven chefs lean ones dry ones they took over the fresh seven ones and God gave him that dream twice so that is a confirmation that this thing will definitely come to the word, come to pass. So verse 9 now, let's go to verse 9. Let me show us a few things there in verse 9. I sincerely don't know if I really just want to preach, but I know I have a message to pass to someone. I'm telling you the truth. Then speak the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying, I do remember my faults this day. I do remember my faults this day somebody is somewhere this month of June that will remember their fault they will remember the act of kindness that you did that your father did and nobody rewarded them for Jonathan did great act of kindness for Joseph for David nobody remembered his generation for several years David was on the throne and everybody in the house of Saul had expired. One guy named Mephibosheth was in the city of Lodeba. While they were trying to carry him to run away, when, when real problem came upon the house of Saul, they were carrying Mephibosheth to run away. The nurse carrying Mephibosheth mistakenly dropped him. He fell down and broke his leg. He grew up limping. This was the child, the person whose father is supposed to be the heir apparent. But Joseph gave platform to David gave platform to, to, to Jonathan to become king. He didn't drag it. Yet David forgot. But one day, while David was sitting and probably meditating, while he was there, the angel, the custodian of the book of the Chronicles of Remembrance, Kataya Baradalabasha. There's the custodian of the book of the chronicles that is about to visit your family this season that is about to visit your home this season the angel that custodian brought the book and said david how would you do like this he opened the book of the chronicle and showed how jonathan helped david to escape when saul his father wanted to kill him and showed how when Saul had determined he would destroy Jonathan ran back to David and said listen that's where my father is don't go there go this direction how Jonathan stood against his father even when his father was planning for him to be the king he was planning for David to take over people forget good deeds
today I dispatch angels angels that have records you know how I got to know angels have records ah you need to know the Bible says in the book of Revelation books were open and another book was open there are books that record the acts and the deeds of men there are books that record please please remember this thing i said now i'm going to use it to say something else before i round off today there are books that are used to record the acts and the good deeds of men it is never forgotten don't ever think that anything good you have done has been forgotten the only problem is whether your angel of remembrance is set on assignment to show the person who should remember so that they will remember you so that day just david woke up and maybe that was what he dreamt about he now said is there anybody remaining in the house of Saul so that I will show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Not because of what the person did, but somebody has done some good deeds that needs to be repaid. Every good deed that needs to be repaid, that is long overdue, that has not been paid. In this month of supernatural encounters, through revelational encounters with angels, those who are supposed to remember certain good deeds over the years that have forgotten they will call you on your phone and they will say i cannot sleep i find it difficult to rest these days every day your thought is on my head that cv you submitted i left that proposal you talked about that idea that you preached that business you discussed with me about please can you show up and let's talk about it again your season of showing up has come your season of remembrance has come in the name of jesus I'm about to teach certain principles from this. Just hold on. I'm taking you somewhere. And the chief baker then spake the chief baker unto the Pharaoh saying, I do remember my fault this day. Go ahead now. Fast. Pharaoh was wroth with his servant. Put me in word in the captain of the guard's house. Both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed the dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed, each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream. He did it. So you see, the guy still had, he still had Joseph's profile. He still had the profile. He did not forget the person of Joseph, but he forgot the act of the kindness of Joseph. He could still remember that there was a Hebrew boy in the prison who did this thing, but all of a sudden he forgot everything. Those who have gone into forgetfulness of the good deeds that should announce you and move you to the next level of your life. Until the book of remembrance is open, certain people will not plunge into new dimensions of glory. Until the book of remembrance is open, certain people will not start seeing a new dimension of favor. So I provoke today the angels who do well to remember people in their dream. The angels who do well to cause people's mind to be cast back to the things that have been done. They are activated over your destiny. They are activated over your family. In the name of Jesus. Church, listen to me. See what happened in the life of Joseph just afterwards. Let's read down. Let's read down. See what happens in life of Joseph. And it came to pass as they interpreted to us. So it was. Me he restored unto my office. And him he harmed. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Then Pharaoh sent. And until remembrance they won't send. No, no. The message will not be sent until you remembered. The call will not come until you are remembered. The appointment will not be fixed until you are remembered. In this kingdom, there is such a thing called divine remembrance. Old Testament, New Testament. When God wanted to remember the nation of Israel, the Bible says, they that dwell in darkness have seen great light. When God wanted to remember the nation of Israel in affliction, in affliction in the land of Egypt, the Bible says that day, 40 years, Moses had been wandering in the wilderness. All of a sudden, God remembered. There are two, two dimensions of this remembrance. God's remembrance. Engineering man's remembrance. God remembering a person. And going to the heart of the man who ought to do it. And say you cannot but remember this act. Many people you see on top of life today. They are products. They are products 
of divine remembrance of the good deeds that people who had died did and nobody paid i've seen people that they called and they said ah i'm sorry that i'm just remembering now are you the grandchild of social -so person they say yes your father was the one who trained me in school i've been so busy with my life and i have forgotten what help do you need and he said right now i am also training my own children and i don't know what is happening to me he say no that cannot happen do you have your passports he say no i will send money all of you get passports start arranging your days of affliction they are over the remembrance that will wipe away the tears of the years of your labor and your pain the remembrance that will wipe away the days that you have gone through hell and crying Mike Mudok said one year one day of favor is more than a thousand years of labor that day of favor is showing up for you that day of favor is coming in remembrance for you in the name of Jesus and he shaved him look at then Pharaoh said call Joseph and they brought him hasty so in the life of Joseph it is possible that certain things can happen fast but until there's remembrance everything will be slow in the life of Joseph it is possible that the man who had been there for several years they could rush him out of the prison but because he had not been remembered he was rotting in the prison there are certain realities that exist in your life and your destiny but because you have been forgotten that's why nothing has happened but God sent me I said I don't know if I'm preaching this morning I don't know what it is but I know I came to speak prophetic word and to give instructions to people this morning that everything heaven has ordained that has been tied down and delayed because of one person who need to remember because of one event who needs to be that needs to be remembered I prophesy by the unction of the Spirit of God this morning and I declare that people here will start sharing testimonies of how they were remembered in the name of Jesus he brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came into Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I have a dream I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and I have heard say of thee that thou can understand a dream why is Joseph who knows how to give glory to God see what he did and Joseph answered Pharaoh saying it is not in me God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace forgetfulness can rob a person of great blessings forgetfulness I'm showing you five six things that forgetfulness does then I'll show you a few things forgetfulness can be the reason for what we call delay in career delay in moving to the next level delay in destiny shift delay in marital advancement it can just be forgetfulness there might be someone somewhere that needs to say oh I know a young lady when we're in school she was the best let me call and be sure whether she's not yet married or something I know her somebody needs to remember somebody oh I know a young guy while we're in school he's a very smart chap let me call and see if he has a job now or he can fill this gap and you have been there rotting and struggling until there's remembrance nothing happens Kanikos govradina mashata almost every one of us at one time or the other we have been pro pro we have been products of people's remembrance and I prophesy again in the name of Jesus where you have stayed too long in your life where you have stayed marking time in your life the remembrance that will shift you out of that position is showing up in the season of your life in the name of Jesus if your amen can grab it let it grab it right now forgetfulness can be the reason certain favors that ought to come to you have not come just same thing happened to joseph forgetfulness may be the reason you are still in the place you have been for too long even after the good deeds of joseph the butler forgot him may situations arise that will cause those who ought to remember you and your family to remember you this season every pharaoh that needs to have a dream that they cannot operate, interpret every organization that needs to have a problem they cannot solve every place where problem needs to be created that your solution you have the solution to i declare by the order of divine remembrance uh, such activities are orchestrated in the realm of the spirit uh, to bring favor and rise into your life uh, in the name of jesus so what did the remembrance do number one 
Remembrance brought Joseph out of prison. Remembrance delivered Egypt out of a time of intense famine. Everybody would have died if Joseph was not remembered. Can I tell you the truth? This divine remembrance will not affect only you. There are destinies attached to your life that it will affect. There are people whose rising will not be possible until you are remembered. My daughter, I'm going to shock it out. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Egypt would have died in serious famine if Joseph was not remembered. Could it be that their deliverer is around them but satanic forces hanging web over the memory of people and they cannot remember you? I came as God's prophet to clear every web. Every web that is stopping people from remembering you. They become so busy in the midst of their own activities and their excitement and their joy and they forget every good deeds that people have done ahead that should be paid back into your own account. So today God said to me, Son, activate the oil of favor that causes divine remembrance so that there will be supernatural encounters in the destinies of people. And I've come this morning in that order and I prophesy by the oil of the Spirit of God that all this order of divine remembrance that brings favor that brings destiny shift that brings transformation that brings lifting up that brings change of story that makes people shed tears of joy that order of favor activated over you this morning in the name of jesus but wait let's learn some things as we advance joseph was remembered after two full years just after the remembrance of Joseph, he was brought hastily out of the prison. Just after the remembrance. Just after the remembrance. Just after the remembrance. Just after the remembrance. Look at your neighbor say, just after the remembrance. Tell the person I am supernaturally remembered. I'm not forgotten. Can a woman forget her sucking baby? The Bible says, mm, yes, the possibility of the woman to forget is there. He said, but God will not forget you. I have embraced you, I have engraved you upon the palms of my hand. So, if it looks as if God has forgotten you, in the nature of God, he does not forget. But what it means is that the beam of his such light is not yet upon a person. In the divine order of God, as God is, it's not possible for him to lose memory. No, 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 no. No, he cannot. But to say that God has forgotten, a person has been forgotten and has not been remembered means that focus has not been brought to that person. Today, God's heaven, heaven is bringing focus on people. Heaven is bringing focus on your matter. Heaven is bringing focus on that key. In the name of Jesus. Let me show you the story of one other person and he will help you. Esther chapter 4, 13 to 17. Let's look at it. I will not read too long there so that I can explain a few things and share certain principles with us. I will, I will give us the story of the other one. Esther chapter 4, 13 to 17. Let's do it very fast. One to go now. Okay. Before I do this, how many of you know the story of Esther? I don't like to just jump into things. Some people probably have not read Esther before in their life. It's possible because the book of Esther, there's just two books. Females like that in the Bible, Ruth and Esther, and sometimes they are not the books that people read easily. People like the book of Psalms where they can pick prayer points to pray. Yeah, we New Testament believers like the New Testament. Sometimes I could I could read the New Testament three times before the end of the year before I before I plunge into that. I understand that. But the book of Esther is in the Old Testament. It's a book that gave us a picture of something and how God can remember people that were doomed, set for destruction. So the queen Vashti by name decided that she was not going to do what her husband uh, Ahasuerus asked her to do to come and dance. It was a feast she was supposed to dance. She said she was not going to dance. So all of a sudden the king said that the king of course thought in his heart that what will I do to this lady? So the advisors of the king came around and said king you have to get her out of this place. Why? Every other woman in town will start disobeying their husbands because she disobeyed you. It will be an order. It will be a rule. It will be a principle. So please just get this lady out of this place. So the king said okay be it according to your advice. And they moved Vashi. So the king decided that they should go around the whole town and start looking for young virgins everywhere. And they will spend one year for the preparation and the cleansing of their bodies so that they will now be brought before the king so that the king will decide who to marry. Are we here together now? So a young girl called Hadassah. Hadassah is also Esther. She happens to be the uh, is a nephew or cousin or niece, whichever grandma it is. Niece 
of the man called Mordecai. Her own parents had died, so her uncle took her and started training her, teaching her, and showed her the principles of the Jews. And she mastered it, and she lived pure as a young Jewish girl. She was living her life like that. So as this young girl started, one day the Bible says that certain things happened, and the king needed a wife, like I said, and chose Esther eventually. Long story short, all the favor we talked about it already. So he chose Esther to be the wife, and now Esther was the wife. But while Esther was there, she was destined to solve a problem that was going to be if, she, if, if it is not solved, destruction will come upon all the Jews in the land. Why? Because a man called Haman had decided that all the Jews would not have rest. He hated Jews. He had special hatred and passion like Adolf Hitler had for the Jews. Maybe worse than that. So he decided that all of them would die. They would die. So upon his decision, that same period, heaven was working out something. That same period, heaven needed somebody that would stay as a representative for the children of the, for the Jews so that they would not be destroyed. So God strategically positioned Esther in. And while Esther was there, in the midst of her comfort, listen, in the midst of comfort, there is tendency for people to forget where they are coming from. So Esther started enjoying the dentists of the king's palace and enjoying the wine that the people drank and the, the food they ate. And somehow it was as if Esther was beginning to forget. People can forget. But all of a sudden, God raised her uncle, Mordecai, as the angel of remembrance. And he said, go and tell Esther. In case she has forgotten, go and remind her that she's still a Jew. Go and remind her that her man has plots to annihilate all the whole Jews wipe them off and after he has annihilated all the whole Jews he will come into the palace and when it is discovered that you are a Jew they will kill you and holy anger rose inside of Esther and this is the result how we got here then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther think not that thyself and that with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time then shall there be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who know it? Whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. There are some of you, that is why God brought you to that family. You were there for such a time as this. May you not be dormant in the day that you should act. May you not be relaxed in the day that you should rise. Some of you are the destiny deliverers. It's the key has been given to your hand to bring your family out of certain dungeons. The Bible says when the entrance of life was open. What's the name of the guy again? Ephraim. Ephraim was too stupid to come out. When the passage of life opened, he was stupid to come out. But thank God for Esther. So Esther went and said, please organize a three days fast. Prayer usually precedes remembrance. Hold that one. Just hold it tight. Hold it tight. I might not be able to talk about it again. But one of the strongest factors, one of the strong factors, major, I'm talking, I'm going to talk to two of them this morning, but I'm not going to hit prayer at all. I just want to tell you that one of the things that usually precedes remembrance is don't get tireless, fervent prayer. Have you forgotten what the Bible says in the New Testament of the unjust judge who will not listen to any man? Who will not do any man's bidding? He said, but that woman stayed there and started crying. I said, help me. Avenge me. Avenge me. The Bible says, he pictured it and pictured the believer and God. And he said, will God not avenge? Those who consistently pray and cry upon him like this. Call upon his name like that. Is somebody being blessed this morning? Is, is, is anything happening to you? So all of a sudden, Esther organized a three days fast. And while she was organizing the three days past, every time heaven is walking out, hell is also walking out. Her man was busy thinking of how he would destroy Esther's uncle Mordecai. Her man was busy planning his head that I'm going, to, I'm going to finish this guy. I'm going to ensure that Mordecai will not leave. Every other person bows to me, but Mordecai will not bow. Why? Mordecai knows the bad deeds of Haman and knew in his heart that Haman was not the right person to relate with. If anybody's sleeping in this Sunday morning service around you, please wake them up. I want them to get the keys that I'm going to share. So all of a sudden, 
Haman went to discuss with his wife and his own advisors. What will I do to this guy? I hate Mordecai. I'm tired. I cannot read all of them because of time. I'm tired of Mordecai. Mordecai is causing problems. Anytime I see him, the king has honored me. Esther has even called me for a banquet. I went there yesterday. She didn't know. He doesn't even know the plan. That something was happening. Esther invited that they should bring him to come and eat. To eat the food that will kill him. Ah, Esther. Wise woman. Wise woman. Ah. She knows that food gets to the heart of men. She said, King, bring him to the banquet. Let him eat. Let him eat well. When he eats, he will be calm. So Mordecai came. Haman came the first day and he ate. When he ate, he went back to his house. As he was going out, he saw Mordecai refusing to bow and he got angry. So his wife told him, he said, listen, let's go and dig a 50 um, feet um, uh, uh, gallow so that we will hang Mordecai there. Let his death be painful. Because he has caused you this pain, emotional trauma. Let his pay death be painful. What an advice. And Haman made up his mind and said, yes, that's what we'll do. So the king came and asked Esther, what else do you want? To the half of my throne, I will give you. I love you. And um, Esther said, let's do another party. Call Haman again. And while the king and Esther were discussing, of course, they had called Haman to come. As they were discussing, the king, the Bible says, and on that night, Calabra Namashate Leko Is it verse 5? Is it, verse, is it chapter 5? I would have loved you to see it. Maybe chapter 5 verse 1. I can't remember the exact one. But I know that it, it seemed to be a striking part of that message. Esther 5 1. Is that what it says? Is it, is it 2 verse 4 or 5? I can't remember. But the, 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 the striking thing, let me just give it. Like I said, I didn't want to read it. But, but the striking thing, the Bible says, And on that night could the king not sleep. Have you found it? On that night could the king not sleep. And he commanded. Chapter 6 verse 1. And here I know it's the beginning. 6 1. Can you just project it for us? 6 1. I want everyone to read it loud and clear together. When your day of remembrance comes, certain people cannot sleep. See, no mercy. Peter could not sleep the day of the remembrance of Colinius. The day of the remembrance of salvation for Colinius. Peter was sleeping in the afternoon. God appeared in the dream. I said, Peter, wake up. Colinius needs this thing. That's how he walks everywhere. On that night, want to go? Let's read it together. I want to go now. On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. Go ahead. Let's do it fast. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Tanan and Theresh, two of the king's chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand. People are quick to forget. So there was a day where these two guys were planning to kill the king. They plotted that they were going to destroy the king. And Mordecai heard about their plot. And when he heard about the plot, he quickly rushed and went to report. What a loyal man. And he said, sir, there are two guys planning to kill you. As soon as he said it, he left. They forgot his picture. And the king started fighting to remove those people, which he did eventually. But nothing was done to Mordecai. Nobody remembered him. He went back to his position as the gatekeeper. Mordecai, remember he was a gate man. So he went back to the gate. He went back to the gate. But the Bible says that night could the king not sleep. He commanded that the book of the Chronicles be brought. And they brought the book of the Chronicles. Can you do this very fast? Do this very fast. The next verse. The next verse. And the king said, who is in the court? No, verse 3. Have we read verse 3? And the king said, what honor and dignity has been done for Mordecai for this? Can you see? Even the king forgot. Everybody forgot. Say, wait, oh, wait, oh. The guy told about the guys that should have killed me. Say, yes. What honor and dignity has been done for Mordecai for this good thing that he did? And guess the answer. They said, then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. He has been forgotten. He has been abandoned. He remained there as a gatekeeper. Whereas, dignity and honor hanging over his destiny. But until the man who would remember him will come up. The dignity and honor will be hanging and the crown will not drop on his head. Is anybody being blessed this morning? Is it making sense to you? So when the day of remembrance came, the king asked and they said nothing. So immediately as this was happening, it was a simultaneous thing happening together. Those of you who did simultaneous Christians, you know, the Christians together. Heaven was remembering Mordecai. At the same time, Haman was thinking that it was time for him to be promoted. So the Bible says that the king commanded and said, Who is in the court? 
and coincidentally that was the exact time that Haman was showing up because I have decided that something good will be done to the man so he asked Haman he said Haman come 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 yes they just told me now that there's somebody who helped me at a particular time he said yes but he didn't mention the name of the person he said wait if he had mentioned that it was Mordecai the favor will close because Haman was his advisor and Haman had knew what to say so God concealed the name so that when the glory is revealed and the name is mentioned even if you hate the person you can't do anything about it are we here together he said what honor should be done to the man that the king desires to honor what dignity what respect what should they do and Haman of course you know you know those guys he packaged himself and he said I know the man that the king delights in he's always been the one the man that the king wants to honor he's always been the one he didn't know that the tables were about to shift the bible says i will overturn and overturn and overturn until it gets to the person whose turn it is and i will give it to him can i prophesy to somebody tables are turning out tables are shifting out tables are shifting out you are coming to the floor in the name of jesus and Haman said hey i know what was be done thinking he was the one in little did they know that he had been desiring the king's position himself he said wait 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 let them bring the king's horse that is the king's car the robe that the king puts on that beautiful one let them give it to the man then give the ring the ring that belongs to the king the stamp of the seal of the king so that he will eventually sign the doom of all the jews he said give it to the man give it to the man because he's going to be the governor for one day and any rule that he makes anything he says will stand as a law according to the order of the people of, uh, of the land of shushan everything will stand he said let them give it to him and let them call the most noble the most honorable of the king's men let him stand and hold the horse and parade the guy around the whole city and let him be announcing this is the man that the king has decided to honor this is the man that the king has decided to honor a shapatalaba may your enemy speak the good that should be done over your destiny the person who does not have good for you in mind before after he has altered all the good that we done may they announce that it should be done to you the good is about to be done to your family it's about to be done to somebody in your house in the name of jesus what the king said go and call mordecai Haman started doing like this. King, can, can we change the plan? He said, no. Go and call Mordecai. And the king brought his royal robe. The king brought his signet, his ring. The king said, go and get me the best of my Lamborghini or my Ferrari. The, 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 the most beautiful one. The, that horse. You know, you know some people have horses. That white horse. That, that one that is so beautiful. And he said, bring it out. The one I prefer. Even the honor that I have not done to my wife. Now I will do it. And they brought everything out. And they dressed the gate man. And they said, sorry, please remind me who's the most, who has been the most honorable and noble person of the king. And Haman, of course, he would not want to change. But he would have said, ah, I think, he said, no, Haman, come. You know you are the one now, Haman. Haman, can you hold the beat and drag the horse and announce the destiny of Mordecai and shout the victory of Mordecai I came to prophesy to somebody your victory is about to be announced your destiny is about to be announced your promotion is about to be announced in the mighty name of Jesus your lifting is about to be announced in the mighty name of Jesus somebody shout remembrance yata nakasota rabash and they were walking and as Haman did it the king said remember to pass the front of your house tell your wife and everybody to come out and the wife of Haman stood like this and she was shedding tears she would have been she would have been sucking she was like what is this and the advisors of Haman stood 
Those who have planned your shame and your embarrassment in this season of life before their very eyes, the Lord will wipe away your tears and bring joy. The Lord will wipe away your tears and bring joy in the name of Jesus. And the wife of Haman was wondering. The houseboy of Haman wanted to run to go and say, Let me help you. A guy said, Shh, if I drop this, I have dropped everything. And all the Jews were watching. And I trust the Jews. They would have looked and they would give themselves eye. See, God caught soap for Madikara. Well, let me start teaching you the lesson as I round off. Listen now. Let me teach you the lessons as I round off. Listen, listen, listen. As soon as this thing was done, in verse 12, the next verse, look at this now. Let's just read this. Then took Ham and the April. No, 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 no. Go back, go back. Let's read that one. And the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the of the city and proclaimed before him thus it shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor and Mordecai came again into the king's gates but Haman hastened to his house mourning and having his head covered wait wait he rode on horse he stayed in the place of royalty he was given opportunity to stand and be the governor for one day but immediately after the 24 hours of his stay as governor ended a wise man he went back to his place of service he didn't come and say king it would be humiliation for me to go back to the gates he didn't say king excuse um 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 ah, king don't do like that now don't do like that a wise man Mordecai as soon as they collected the rope from him and collected the signet and they brought him down from the horse he was still thanking God in that much mood of joy and celebration he did not go and say bring a throne let me sit down now he did not say after i have done this thing i can't go back the bible says he went back to the gate please listen and let's learn lessons from wise people after the boy, your boss gives you opportunity to give a speech that he ought to have given, would you still go back to your office or you start eyeing the office of the next in command? After your boss gives you a platform to do something that only him would have done, even when there are other people higher than you, would pride rise in your heart and you will say, I can't go back to where I'm coming from, or you will still wait. Till the same boss announce your rising because that announcement that initial parade that initial opportunity to take his place that initial opportunity to do that thing might be a test of your humility your heart they didn't need to tell Mordecai as he was singing he went back to the guys at the gate and he said ah, they didn't promote you you're back here say I don't have entitlement mentality this is my position if the king likes, let him come and pick me from here and put me permanently there. If he does not like, I will remain here. I will not forget from where they picked me. Many of us are quick to forget where God has picked us from. Many of us are quick to forget the things that God has done in our life. Please, you give me five minutes. Please, I want to round up this. It's not a teaching series, so I must finish it today. Just five minutes. Please, I beg you, church. Many of us are quick to forget. Let me show you the lessons very, very fast. Let's look at this. There's a principle called the principle of humility. He went back to the gate. After such honor, he did not get puffed up. Because he remembered that the lifting came from the place of his service. My question is, where are you even serving? If you are given opportunity to take the role that is beyond your present position, will you still be humble enough to go back to your duty post after the five hours of taking that role? Or you will come and say, sir, if you know you didn't want to promote me before, why did you now make me do that? Everybody is expecting now that I should have gone high. Why would you now do this to me? 
or you will just gladly go back and say thank you for the one you have done sir i'm so very grateful i see it as a privilege it's not a right there are many people who see opportunities as rights they don't see it as a privilege is somebody learning something this morning are you ready to pick my lessons this morning that's lesson start getting things Mordecai was wise enough not to exalt himself I'll be reading because I don't want to preach if I start preaching I'll take time he went back to his duty post some people fell because once given opportunity to act in high capacity instead of saying thank you and going back to their duty post they assumed that the leadership should keep them in that position listen it might just be a test let me be fast to mention to you now that as God begins to lift you may it not be heard that you have forgotten God in Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 17 to 20 God told the children of Israel he said listen after he has announced all the blessings that will come upon them after he has said many, many things he said listen to me the day you become blessed like this if you forget the Lord your God you will come back people are quick to forget where they have been picked from you are drinking carry now you are struggling to subscribe on your phone now you are finding it hard to pay your rent now but time will come where all those things will be so much in abundance if you forget God can you see every other thing I thought now this is where I'm going to show you something that can change your life forever see how you are doing running at the health of Canada, prayer points everywhere just because you need God to show up and eventually God remembers you change your story and you forget God look at your neighbor say don't forget don't be quick to, too quick to forget I love the psalmist I love the psalmist David said bless the Lord oh my soul all that is within me bless his holy name he said bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits when God gives you that job in that multi-million company do not forget his benefits when God raises you from that family where nobody has ever lifted their head and your story has changed please do not forget don't get too busy and say I'm too busy sir pastor I can't come to church today I'm sorry pastor I have to sleep I have to wash my clothes on a Sunday morning pastor you see you need to understand with me the nature of my job has taken all of my time and I could seek a table shutter anything that takes you out of the place where God picked you from can lead you back to where he picked you from be wise be wise be wise be wise the person you ask the favor from has done it the glory must go back to him is anybody getting what I'm saying today are you sure you understand what I'm saying again listen for listen now listen in the season of remembrance what you are remembered for is your good deeds God is watching all your good deeds and trust me he will remember you Joseph kept being faithful even in the midst of intense hard life he was faithful he didn't run away from the place do you have good deeds that on the day of remembrance they will have a book to open if they open a book will they see anything you have done what are you doing now for God what are you doing now for the kingdom what are you doing now to change the lives of people what are you doing now that will be something that can be remembered so that in case anything gets bad and things get worse it can be remembered that you were the one that did this thing what are you doing now for some of us it's your season of sowing the seeds that will be remembered for some of you people have sown some seeds that will be remembered but you need to sow your own seeds for your own generation and for your own children part of the ways to sow the seed is cease you die hard dog get commitment com commitment in the kingdom of god passionately not looking at anybody's face serving uncompromisingly that's one of the strongest keys that causes god to remember because remembrance will not only come if there's a memory of what you have done it's only if there's a history of something you have done if joseph had not done anything will anybody remember him it's when your memorial comes to heaven that they will remember you what are you doing now sweep you say you will not sweep join and let's do this you say you will not do others are committed and they're bringing everything and pushing all their energies to serve god you say i'm not interested what do you want to be remembered for what do you want to be remembered for what do you want to be remembered for Isaiah woke up one morning and he went to Ezekiah and said Ezekiah God has spoken to me that you will die prepare your house 
your days are over. You will not recover from this sickness. And Isaiah, trust me, strong prophet, he turned and he was going back home. As Isaiah turned and he was going back home, he has passed his message. It's a painful message if he had passed it. But Ezekiah turned and faced God and said, God, what is this? This quick notice, who owns it? And God said, it's you, of course. He said, not me. He said, it cannot be done, not me, Ezekiah. I think they didn't write the address properly. And God said, why are you talking with so much boats? Then get this guy said, he said, God, remember how I serve you. Remember my commitment to Jerusalem. Remember how everybody forgot and I stood. Remember how my praise rises to you every morning. It's a fragrance of worship. God, if only you are God who really remembers, remember. Go back to your archives and search the books and you will see the good deeds I have done. Sir, just as Isaiah reached his house, God said to Isaiah, men who have records of their good deeds, they shift my mind. Say now go back. Go and tell Ezekiah that I have added 15 years to arrange and adjust and amend before he will die. Ah! To show a sign that I did it. He said the sun will move 15 degrees backward. So that all of history and posterity will remember that those who have records of their good deeds, I am a faithful God. I don't forget. And Isaiah took the message back and said, This is what the Lord has said. You will not die. He has remembered how you made contributions to the building projects, how you paid and you bought bonds for evangelism how that girl was poor they drove her out of the house you begged your wife and you people took the boy in and paid his school fees even when you don't know his parents how you went out of your way to the orphanage and you gave money you spent a lot to ensure that lives are not destroyed God has remembered you will not die the day when destruction comes locking in front of you and the angel of your remembrance opens a book what would they see Rise on your feet. God is watching your consistency. People will mock you as you are serving. Nothing has happened. Look at your life. You have been faithful. You have been committed. You have been working. Well, has it changed anything about you? Please. The key in the kingdom. Continue doing good. Uh, nobody heard what I just said. Did you hear what I just said? Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 He said let us not become weary In doing good For at the proper time We will reap a harvest If we do not give up At the proper time We will reap a harvest If we do not give up We are going to take a prayer point Open numbers for me Nehemiah We are going to take one prayer point Those for the second service are waiting There is a heavy message for you You will need to hear it this morning You 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 need to hear it this morning.